I just want to send out prayers to the to the ones that was lost last night. Anytime I can make out, you know, anything that's going on, you know, I you know I just stop the show and you know help them get the help they need, you know. Um, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Monday, November 8th. And over the weekend, I covered this extensively over on Instagram and wanted to talk to you about what happened down in Houston, Texas over the weekend at a festival for Travis Scott, who is a hip hop artist who has sold a lot of albums. He has been nominated for the Grammys multiple times. He's had a ton of number one hits and he is also dating Kylie Jenner, he is the father to her daughter, Stormy Webster, and they have a second child on the way. Travis, who I had no idea existed because I don't listen to uh, his music, I recently, I had only known about because of his relationship with Kylie, but this weekend I have gotten a crash course into all things Travis Scott, and it's a mess. But over the weekend, he hosted an event in Houston called Astroworld. He is from the Houston area, and back in 2018, he released a critically acclaimed album called Astro World, his largest selling album to date. And he spawned a festival off of that same album called Astro World, and the event is a two day event, and it was the third event thus far. He held it for the first time in 2018. 2019, it was canceled last year. Do due to COVID and then this year it was back and better than ever. When the show sold out very quickly in May, he made a tweet about how they would need to sneak the wild ones in. His shows are known for being very uh, rambunctious. He's all about raging. He loves to stage dive. They love to have mosh pits. There's been a lot of things in his life like he got arrested back in 2017 for inciting a riot back at a concert in Arkansas. He had some trouble at Lollapalooza back in 2015. There has been a lot of stuff that's happened at concerts where people have gotten injured. There was a, an, an event in 2017 where a boy was sort of forced off of a balcony and he is currently suing Travis because Travis encouraged someone else to jump off the balcony, which resulted in him getting pushed. He was on a third floor, the other person was on a second floor and he is now paralyzed. So Travis has this history of getting really wild and rambunctious and also encouraging his fans to respond the same while also telling them consistently not to uh, listen to security, to jump the security breaches, to crash his concerts, to basically do whatever you can to come see him even if he's sold out. <laughs> So this event was already going to be kind of a mess because of it's post COVID people are already high energy and a lot of like tense animosity that's been building up over the last two years. So he was hosting the event, but he undersold it allegedly. And there was about 50,000 tickets sold during the two days event. There was multiple artists that were playing and Travis's headlining show was on Friday night scheduled to start at 9 p.m. and it was supposed to be a full 75 minute set. When Travis took the stage, there was no other concerts going on at the same time and a surge happened in the audience which caused a massive tidal wave of people pushing up against each other, creating no space for people to breathe, which resulted in a lot of people passing out and some even being trampled. There was no room for mosh pits. There was no room to breathe. We couldn't even breathe. We didn't even have enough room to, like i'm sore like like this hurts to take a deep breath today like we couldn't even breathe in there because everyone's bodies were there was nowhere we could go we we're trying to push back we we're trying to push back to get out 
and we're just getting pushed forward. We're just getting pushed deeper into the crowd. There's sinkholes of people in the crowds all around me. Like, if I would have, if I would have hit the floor, I would have never gotten up. At the end of this, and in, in the middle of all of this, there was a lot going on where people couldn't move. There was sort of sinkholes where people were falling on top of each other, and multiple times people were trying to get Travis to stop the show and apparently the police in Houston said that they told Live Nation the organization that put on the show that they should can't or uh, that they should cut the show early around 9:35 the show did not stop until 10:15 after he performed his last song and when it was all said and done there was eight people now gone, multiple people that were taken to the hospital in cardiac arrest, and still tonight there are multiple people fighting for their lives on life support. The eight people that have now been identified are the following. 21-year-old Franco Patino, who was studying for his master, uh, bachelor's degree at, up at the University of Dayton in uh, Ohio. There was a 14-year-old John Hilgert, who was a freshman at a local high school in the area, and he was an active baseball player. 16-year-old Brianna Rodriguez, she was a dancer and very involved at her high school and a junior in high school in Texas as well. There is uh, unknown age Rudy Pena, who is from Laredo. He was uh, the sweetest person, friendly, outgoing, had many friends because he always was there for everyone. He was a big fan of Travis. There was Jake, Jacob Jurnick, who was 21, who traveled down to see the show with his friend Franco, who also passed. He was 21 and he was a huge web designer and he loved design, drawing, and hoped to go into digital marketing and digital design. There was Danish Berg, who was 27 years old, and he was trampled after trying to save his fiance's life. And his family is demanding answers. There is Axel Acosta, who is 21, who traveled from Washington. And finally, 23-year-old Madison Dubisky, who is confirmed, who is confirmed by her friends and family. And she was described as someone who was, she was a cheerleader. She was, had a special way of making every single person that she encountered in life feel special, appreciated, and accepted no matter what. So currently eight are no longer here and there are two that are currently fighting and could potentially succumb as well. This has been horrible all overall, colossal failures, and a lot of people are wondering how did this happen? Why did this happen? The crowds were so close together. There was discussions about someone getting pricked, although most of the reports that are coming out right now have to do with trampoline and people just not being able to breathe. Witness accounts all say the same thing. They couldn't breathe. They were passing out because they couldn't breathe. And then once on the ground, people were walking all over them because they had nowhere to move. The visuals from this event are so hard to watch. And in the middle of all of that, Travis stopped the concert multiple times, but did not cut the show. And now people are suing him. He's had multiple lawsuits filed against him uh, for serious injuries and for negligence. He is now going to be facing a, there is a press conference earlier today by some, by an attorney in Texas who is, said that he already has 35 people that are going to be signing on to a class action lawsuit and he, Travis, will be included along with the Houston uh, Community Sports and Recreation Board along, and also Live Nation and other people involved in the show. So this has been a horrible, horrible, horrible situation all across the board and people are demanding answers. The police in this case even put out a statement today saying that Going into, the, going into the event on Friday, they had deep concerns about the safety. So this is what they put out on Twitter. I met with Travis Scott and his head of security for a few moments last Friday prior to the main event. I expressed my concerns regarding public safety and that in my 31 years of law enforcement experience, I've never seen at a time with, I've been never been at a time with more challenges facing citizens of all ages to include a global pandemic and social tension throughout the nation. I asked Travis and his team to work with uh, the HPD for all events over the weekend and be mindful of his team's social media 
messaging on any unscheduled events and the meeting was very brief and respectful and a chance for me to share my public safety concerns as chief of police. As I've previously stated, our criminal investigation continues. We are asking for everyone to be considerate of the grieving families during this incredibly difficult time. Please continue to lift them up in prayer. So he has come out with an Instagram video where he was basically saying that he was devastated. He really had no idea about the severity of what happened. You know, my fans, my fans, like, my fans really mean the world to me. And I always just really want to leave them with a positive experience. And any time I can make out, you know, anything that's going on, you know, I'll, you know, I'll just stop the show and, you know, help them get the help they need, you know? Um, I could just never imagine the severity of the situation. And then today he said that he would be refunding the tickets for all Astro World attendees and canceling uh, North Vegas festival appearances. He also was too distraught to play up an upcoming appearance in Vegas. He is being uh, sued by multiple people and there's multiple lawsuits that will also be filed likely over this, in the next coming days against Travis. And he is now being canceled all over Twitter because of his like penitence for riling up crowds and this defiance against him and against authority and people just really acting in response to him. Over the weekend, so much was coming out about the story and it's been a really sad development to just hear tale after tale after tale of people just not being able to breathe, not having the space, and now we are still sitting here on Monday and there's no answers. Police, even people that were there are now starting to blame the authorities there for not doing a better job with planning. And there's a lot of finger pointing going around with police, with the Travis Scott people. With Travis Scott has offered to pay for the funerals, I should add. And there's a performer there, Roddy Rich, that's also donating all the proceeds he made for funerals for those that lost their lives. But honestly, that seems like a really small token given the magnitude of what happened. And the families obviously want justice. So Tony um, Busby, who's representing Axel uh, Acosta, who passed, says that, he said, I represent the family of Axel Acosta, who was crushed and killed at Astroworld concert. We also represent more than 10 other concert goers. Today, he said it was 35 who were injured and are taking talking to dozens more. And we have retained a former um, HPD major crime investigator along with professionals to identify all those responsible for this catastrophe. So they said today they plan to file multiple lawsuits, one for the Acosta family and another for these 35 other people. So Travis in response to that has canceled his future shows, Fortnite just dropped him and they got rid of his emote from their store which actually was just released back in April. All over Twitter and on Instagram, people are throwing away Kylie Jenner's uh, makeup. She put out a statement which really made people upset because on her Instagram stories at one point, she actually had a video where you could see the ambulance in the crowd. And her statement that she made to people made people think that she was on Instagram, made people feel like she was lying. So her statement said this, Travis and I are broken and devastated. My thoughts and prayers are with all who lost their lives, were injured or affected in any way by yesterday's events. And also for Travis and I, who I know cares deeply for his fans and the Houston community. I want to make it clear. We aren't aware of any fatalities until the news came out after the show and in no world would have continued filming for or performing. I'm sending my deepest condolences to all the families during this difficult time and will be praying for the healing of everyone who has been impacted. So there's conflicting statements on what they did know and what they don't know. There's also this video circulating from the actual event where it was clear someone was trying to tell Travis that something was happening and he wouldn't stop the show and he just kept going and then told the earth like they wanted the ground to shake. People have put out so many videos on on Instagram and on Twitter and on TikTok, it's hard to ignore what was happening. And it was hard to see that people wouldn't have known. And if Live Nation was told by police to cut the show early and they didn't, it seems really not looking good for Travis. Everyone wants him canceled. No one knows exactly what happened. 
It seems like there was only one way out and one way in, which meant everyone was coming from the back and the only way you could get out was going through the back, but there was no space for those in front to get to the back because the back was pushing on the front. So there was no way for people to get out and only one entrance in, which created a disaster. So I don't know at the end of the day what's going to happen here. Currently, there are two people fighting for their lives that are whose families are asking for prayers. Um, Ezra Blunt, who is nine years old, is um, dealing with severe brain swelling and he's clinging to life. His family is asking for prayers. And then 22-year-old Bahardi Sh uh, Shahani is fighting for her life and her family is also asking for prayers. So there's so much that we'll have to uncover. This is the first video of what I assume will be many in this situation. And I do hope that this, uh, I'm just, I'm shocked. I am so deeply saddened for every single person that was affected by this. I am so grieved for all the families who sent one of their kiddos there and they lost their child. Like he has a young crowd, the youngest person, the oldest person that passed was 27, the youngest 14, and there could be a nine-year-old. It's heartbreaking and there's so much that we need answers for and right now people are demanding accountability people want travis scott criminally charged it's very hard to get criminal charges in situations like this the company live aid that puts on all of these uh concerts has a long history of problems with their own uh running of concerts so this is going to be complicated complex and it's hard to know what's going to happen with travis scott's career or even kylie jenner's at this point ever uh since this has happened i would love to know what your thoughts are after seeing everything over the weekend and if there's something you have to share with me let me know in the comments below bye guys